All right, friends, let's get right to it. Today is an important day, just like yesterday was an important day. And tomorrow will be an important day. It is important for us to focus on specific days for the meanings that they have. But sometimes it's important to remember that every day has multiple meanings that isn't always explored. We have the day after Election Day, where some of us feel very relieved, some of us do not feel relieved, but all of us recognize that the America that was three days ago will actually be the America in three days. The big difference is who might be sitting in a seat, but the citizenship and the issues haven't changed. Our worries, our posture might change, but people who are in the most vulnerable positions in society are not suddenly okay nor were they suddenly going to be not okay. The problems that we face are usually accumulated over time. And so one of the things that we need to do is have a historical consciousness. Arlene is already pointing to where I'm going, and I'm gonna to get to the Parsha in a second. But in order to ground ourselves in today, we need to think through a Jewish prism about time. Today, November 9th, Tonight marks the anniversary of Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, where 1,000 synagogues and countless human beings who were Jewish were burned in Germany, a sign that not only that day changed everything, but the accumulation of legitimate legal steps, all imbued with hateful intention, led to the degradation of God's image and anti-Semitism in the most violent and vile of ways. It is a day to remember, and that is a phrase, friends, because not only is today that memory, but in the week that we find ourselves, we're going to re-approach Sodom and Gomorrah. We are going to approach Vayera, the binding of Isaac. It is critical, friends, that we remember the long arc of history and that we do not presume, though it is a beautiful vision, that the arc of history is long and it bends towards justice. Dr. King used those words quoting a colonial Unitarian minister, but you have to understand that through Jewish eyes that sentence is a question mark. It does not always bend towards justice. We have been watching as Jews for thousands of years, and there are many times that the arc of history is not bending towards justice. It depends upon the combined weight and gravitas of all people of conscience, which should be all people, that lead the arc of history to bend towards justice. But friends, just because we feel relief that the votes that were cast were counted and it seems like the procedures of democracy are intact for now, doesn't mean that the people in the most vulnerable positions are suddenly going to be okay. We cannot care and call election day our civic duty if the day after election day we don't, and if the week before election day we didn't. The ongoing work of UJA and the commitments of the interfaith, multi-faith community that wants the world to be in a better place, that is willing to put its weight on the arc of history to make sure that it bends towards justice, recognizes that it takes the combined weight of humanity to push that arc in the right direction. I want to bless us before we look at the Parsha to just take stock Yes, to breathe a sigh of relief, but to know that tonight marks in Jewish consciousness because it is Kristallnacht tonight. That all is not well and all has not been well, but we are resilient and heroic and we do not walk through this world alone. To cast a vote as a Jewish American is to say, I have a voice, I am a stakeholder in the destiny of the most powerful nation in the history of the world. And my heart here and my heart in Israel aches for the societal shifts that are taking place that affect the most vulnerable people, be they LGBTQ Israelis, 
Israeli Arabs and Israeli Jews, who until last week had the pride of position in their community, which was full of dignity and celebration. And now one of the coalition partners in the Israeli Knesset is avowedly anti-gay. What will we do for them starting right now? Move forward. Think about America. Yes, some states ratified protections for abortion rights and reproductive services for women, but other states did not. What will we do now? And this week we read the Binding of Isaac. I'm making the pivot towards the Parsha, nine minutes and 15 seconds in. This week we read the Binding of Isaac. This week we read about Sodom and Gomorrah. This week, though no one talks about her, we read about Lot's wife. What did she do wrong that caused her to turn into a pillar of salt? She turned back. She looked back at her home that was destroyed. Don't look back at all you have known as it burns. What an impossible command to fulfill. And maybe the phrase that she turned to a pillar of salt means that she just couldn't stop crying salty tears. We look at our world friends and her looking back at a burning home. Maybe that's not so different than Avram who looked at a bira doleket, a burning castle. We are challenged friends by the world that we have inherited and the question is, will we give the next generation a better world to inherit? The Binding of Isaac is an incredibly complicated story, but it doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes from problem after problem after problem. One of my dearest teachers, Rabbi Neil Gilman of Blessed Memory, was a theologian, wrote a lot about God and theology. And he was once part of a conversation called, um, called Bibliodrama, right? It's a pioneering way from about 40, 50 years ago to inhabit the biblical stories as the characters in the Torah and to not answer as yourself, but to answer as the character. And ironically, my dear teacher, Rabbi Neil Gilman, played God. And someone said, God, how could you command such a thing? Now, parenthetically, remember I said a second ago, the story of the Binding of Isaac comes from somewhere. Now, I'm not saying Dr. Gilman knew what God was thinking. Neil knew what he was feeling and what he was feeling for God. Listen to his answer. The question to God in this exercise was, God, how could you command such a thing? And my dear Rebbe, speaking for God, said, I just wanted to know that somebody loved me right. From the very beginning, I've given commands and my children don't listen. I just want to know that someone will listen. And maybe, this is now me speaking, not Dr. Gilman, maybe if Avram really listened to that horrible command, he would have put a fight up. He would have fought back against God the way Avram did just a chapter earlier when God said, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. You might remember this. Avram said, how dare you to God? Chalilalach. You're going to sweep away the innocent with the guilty? The judge of all the earth won't do justice? Friends, let's combine all the things we're talking about. The cumulative problems that we face are not out of nowhere and they are not episodic and one election day will not end all the struggles and the arc of history will not bend towards justice alone. That is not an assumption. It will happen over time. Maybe it won't. But you and I are called to look at the problems of the world, whether we think God put them there as a test or we are testing each other and our collective humanity. We must show up over and over and over again so that the LGBTQ Israeli, the Israeli Arab, 
the woman in a situation that is untenable because she has an unwanted pregnancy for any number of reasons in America, the African American who still suffers under an unbelievable situation of racism and bias in the texture of the United States, all of this requires enormous attention and a historical consciousness. The Parsha tells us that when Avram fulfills God's command and brings Isaac up to the mountain and stands with a knife over his son, which is an impossible thing to imagine. It's one of those things, if it weren't in the Torah, I wouldn't believe it's in the Torah. How could that be? God has to stop Avram from doing something that Avram should have stopped himself from doing. And from that point on, God never speaks to Avram again. When we are willing to pursue our truths in a way that hurts someone else, especially our future, God isn't with us. Only when we remember to love our neighbor, only when we remember to love our neighbor, can we say that we are part of bending that arc of history only when we hold hands with our neighbors and push with all of our weight on the arc of history can we claim to be near God? The true test of faith is when do you speak up? When things hit their urgent, God forbid, climax? Or in small steps every day, all day? I looked at my colleagues yesterday at UJA and we were talking about Ukraine and no one's talking about Ukraine anymore. We were talking about Torah. Thank God we talk about Torah. We're talking about Israel with great love and concern. It's going to take daily devotion, which is why a community learning for 666 straight weekdays how to wield Torah as a gift and not a weapon in the world how to build community in the most devastating of times, how to wish each other healing and do something about it. A community of people who are becoming friends with each other and who all know that the only policy that is ever truly on the ballot is loving your neighbor. I wanna bless you all to be part of the great work that begins again this minute. What is a way today, that you can continue to address the things that kept you awake last night. Friends, this is a precious community because we do not think Torah is a gift only for the self. I'll close with one of my favorite teachings. There's a phrase in Psalms that says, Her mouth is open with wisdom and the Torah of love is on her tongue. So the rabbis say, a Torah of love. Does that mean that there is a Torah of love and a Torah that is not about love? And they go through a long conversation, as rabbis often do, and they end up saying that a Torah that you learn not in order to teach, that's not a Torah of love. But a Torah that you learn in order to share, that is Torah chesed. That is a Torah of love. I want to bless you, friends, to, to let in the Torah that we share and to see it as a gentle, loving gift through you to the world around you. It has been a gift, and it will continue to be a gift, to build this community by your side, to be part of the zeros and ones that somehow become a makom, a place for God between us, between us and in us. So let's take a breath, sing our way into a good day, and do good today.
See you tomorrow, friends. Have a good day.